As our technological prowess increases, so does our ability to implement ideas that may have lived in the realm of sci-fi fantasy just a few short decades ago. One of these ideas is the concept of artificial gravity. The hottest destination in space travel today is Mars, and organizations such as SpaceX are at the forefront of the race to the Red Planet. This is easier said than done, though, since the inhospitality of space provides added challenges for humans. SpaceX has revealed it may have finally overcome one of the biggest hurdles by developing the concept of an artificial gravity starship. Let's take a closer look. Artificial gravity is the creation of an inertial force in a spacecraft to emulate the force of gravity. This concept is often seen in, but is not limited to, science fiction shows like Star Trek, and researchers are currently working on methods to create artificial gravity in space. Not only would the creation of artificial gravity simplify the next era of space exploration, making tasks more straightforward, but it would also be crucial for potential space tourism. The effects of microgravity in space can be harmful to humans, so as we look at longer crewed missions, including journeying to Mars, artificial gravity could be essential to our astronauts' health. In his 1905 theory of special relativity, Albert Einstein wrote that gravity and acceleration are indistinguishable. That means that in a rocket traveling at 31.19 feet per second squared, the downward acceleration of gravity here on Earth, an astronaut would feel their body anchor to the floor just like it is on their home planet. The problem is, you can't always be accelerating at this rate in space, especially in an orbiting space station. Fortunately, there is more than one form of acceleration, and by using centrifugal force, we can generate something equivalent to gravity on Earth. One possible way of creating artificial gravity in space is by utilizing a technology called an O'Neill cylinder. Named after the physicist who proposed them, Gerard O'Neill, this consists of a pair of massive cylinders that rotate in opposite directions, allowing them to be permanently directed toward the sun, replicating gravity. Jeff Bezos, the owner of space exploration company Blue Origin, has proposed O'Neill cylinders as the basis of floating space colonies, enabling trillions of humans to live in orbit. Aside from being a long way from any kind of practical application, at 20 miles long and 4 miles in diameter, designed to house several million people, O'Neill cylinders are way too big for most applications smaller than colonies in space. Researchers at the University of Colorado Boulder have a small-scale suggestion, rotating systems that could fit inside the rooms of spacecraft. While this wouldn't provide artificial gravity for the whole craft or station, it would enable space travelers to retreat to a specific area and spend some time experiencing a gravitational field more like that of Earth. This system also uses centrifugal acceleration, replicating a gravitational field of 1G, the same as that on Earth, with astronauts lying down on a short radius centrifuge for a quick spin. Spinning astronauts might not be the ideal solution, however. As anyone who has ridden the teacups one too many times can tell you, this method comes with its own health effects. Another potential design for creating artificial gravity is a long-spinning, stick-like vehicle around 328 feet across with a nuclear reactor on one end and a crew compartment on the other for journeys to Mars. However, these have had engineering issues preventing their application. Establishing artificial gravity could be key to protecting the health of astronauts on long-term space missions. For five decades, NASA's Human Research Program has studied the effects of microgravity on the human body. They have found that deprived of the gravity of Earth, weight-bearing bones lose on average 1 to 1.5% of mineral density every month of spaceflight. Muscle mass is lost more rapidly under microgravity conditions than on Earth. In addition to these factors, during spaceflight, fluids in the human body can shift upwards, putting pressure on the eyes that potentially lead to vision issues. The sensation of weightlessness or zero gravity happens when the effects of gravity are not felt. Technically speaking, gravity does exist everywhere in the universe because it is defined as the force that attracts two bodies to each other, but astronauts in space usually do not feel its effects. The International Space Station, for example, is in perpetual free fall above the Earth. Its forward motion, however, just about equals the speed of its fall toward the planet. This means that the astronauts inside are not pulled in any particular direction, so they float. Not having to bear weight on your feet sounds relaxing, but in the long term, there are many health problems associated with it. Bones and muscles weaken, and other changes also take place within the body. One of the functions of the ISS is to study how astronaut health is affected by long periods of weightlessness. You don't have to leave Earth to escape the bonds of gravity. 
Anyone who has ridden to the top of the hill in a fast roller coaster or who sat in a small plane pushed down suddenly by the wind briefly experienced weightlessness. More sustained periods are possible in planes that fly a parabola. NASA's Reduced Gravity Flight Program, for example, flies planes in a series of about 30 to 40 parabolas for researchers to conduct experiments on board. Each climb produces a force about twice the force of gravity for 30 seconds. Then when the plane reaches the top of the parabola and descends, passengers feel microgravity for about 25 seconds. The film crew and actors in the movie Apollo 13 spent hours aboard a plane that flew parabolic flights over and over again. This allowed the actors to really float during their time in the movie spacecraft, rather than relying on cumbersome wires. Astronauts, however, experience weightlessness for much longer periods. The longest sustained time spent in space took place in 1994-95 when Valery Polyakov spent almost 438 days in space. Even a few days in space can present temporary health problems as Hyde Marie Stephenson Piper discovered after spending two weeks in space during STS-115 in 2006. During a press conference after the landing, Piper collapsed as she was not quite readjusted to gravity. Weightlessness causes several key systems of the body to relax as it is no longer fighting the pull of gravity. Astronauts' sense of up and down gets confused because the vestibular system can no longer figure out where the ground and ceiling are. Spacecraft designers take this into account. The ISS, for example, has all of its writing on the walls pointing in the same direction. Crew members also experience a disruption in their proprioceptive system, which tells where arms, legs, and other parts of the body are oriented relative to each other. This disorientation can cause astronauts to become queasy for a few days. One famous example took place during Apollo 9 in 1969. Rusty Schweikert had to change a planned spacewalk because he was feeling ill. The concern was that if he vomited while in his spacesuit, the fluid could spread through his helmet or interfere with the breathing apparatus and cause him to potentially choke to death. Spacecraft also must be designed to take microgravity into account. During spacewalks, for example, astronauts require extra handholds and footholds on the exterior of their spacecraft so that they can anchor themselves and not float away. Astronauts in space for weeks to months can run into trouble. Calcium and bones secretes out through urine. As the bones weaken, astronauts are more susceptible to breaking them if they slip and fall, just like people with osteoporosis. Muscles also lose mass. But time on the International Space Station has helped NASA run studies on how astronaut health is affected by time and weightlessness. Already, the agency has made changes. For example, it replaced the Interim Resistive Exercise Device with the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device in 2008, allowing astronauts to do weightlifting without maxing out their top weight. AREV is linked to better outcomes in bone density and muscle strength, although all conclusions in space are hard to draw since the astronaut population is fit already and extremely small. Astronauts typically have an allocated exercise period of two hours a day in space to counteract these effects. This time not only includes cardiovascular exercise and weightlifting, but also time to change clothes and set up or take down equipment. Despite exercise, it still takes months of rehabilitation to adjust on Earth after a typical six-month space mission. More recently, doctors have discovered eye pressure changes in orbit. NASA has tracked vision changes in astronauts that were on the space station, but nothing so serious as to cause concern. Its cause is still under investigation, although one possible culprit includes spinal fluid that stays constant in microgravity instead of the normal shifting that takes place on Earth as you lie down or stand up. In addition to the spinal fluid, a 2017 study tracked changes in both short flight and long flight astronauts. Some studies also point out that astronauts experience a slightly elevated level of carbon dioxide on the station because of the filtration system. That gas may also contribute to eye problems. Former NASA astronaut Scott Kelly participated in a rare one-year mission to the International Space Station in 2015-16. His twin brother and former NASA astronaut Mark agreed to participate, along with Scott, in several twin experiments to compare Scott's health in space to that of Mark's on the ground. Preliminary results from one study released in October 2017 showed that different genes turn on or off in space. Other studies discussed earlier that year revealed subtle changes as well. For example, telomeres in Scott temporarily got longer in space. Scott also had a slight deterioration in cognitive ability and bone formation, although not enough to be concerning. 
Due to the massive health risks posed by traveling in zero gravity, SpaceX has come up with a plan to produce artificial gravity on the Starship. The new concept is called the Gravity Link Starship. The idea was inspired in part by science fiction. Depending on how realistic a franchise is trying to be, Starships will either generate their own gravity using some special device or through rotating sections. While the former concept is much like the hyperdrive, the latter is entirely feasible. The concept goes back over a century, with the first recorded example provided by Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, one of the founding fathers of rocketry and aeronautics. In 1903, he published a study titled Investigation of Outer Space Rocket Devices, where he suggested using rotational force to create artificial gravity in space. Since then, many variations of this idea have been proposed for space stations and habitats, such as the Von Braun Wheel, the O'Neill Cylinder, and the Stanford Taurus. Some concepts are even being considered for development, such as NASA's Nautilus X space station or the Gateway Foundation's proposal for a commercial space station. After conducting some research into centripetal force, scientists arrived at the idea for the GLS. The GLS is a hub ship where the payload bay is filled with a truss that unfolds and deploys robotically, thus serving as the wheel spokes. It would be positioned between two passenger starships and would link up with them during the six-plus month long journey to Mars. Once linked up, the passenger ships would swivel around to reorient themselves and fire their thrusters to impart momentum to the wheel. Once enough velocity was generated to stimulate Earth normal gravity, the passenger ships would reorient themselves again to face inward towards the hub ship. For the remainder of the journey, those aboard the passenger ships would experience the sensation of being pulled down thanks to the centripetal force created by the rotation of the wheel. In addition to detailing the system, scientists also performed the necessary calculations to determine the structure of the truss and the necessary velocity to simulate Earth normal gravity. They determined that a rotational velocity of 31 meters a second would work for a system that measured about 100 meters in radius, providing the feeling of 1G and making roughly three rotations per minute. Scientists are already at work on the second iteration of this proposal, which includes updated calculations on the rotation, a new truss shape, and the introduction of cables to reinforce the tensile strength of the truss. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about the James Webb Space Telescope and its detection of artificial lights on Proxima b. Do you think this new artificial gravity concept will work? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.